On the battlefield in Ukraine, the Russian army lost an average of 1,271 people killed and wounded every day in September, a senior NATO official said at a briefing in Brussels on the sidelines of a meeting of defense ministers. This is the highest number since the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine. In May, NATO cited the figure of 1,000 killed and wounded in this regard. The official also stressed that according to the alliance's forecasts, such losses on the Russian side will continue until the end of 2024. He linked the increase in Russian losses to the fact that fierce battles are now taking place not only in the Kharkiv region but also in the Kursk region and that military actions have intensified along the entire front line. Russia continues to make small but steady tactical advances in eastern Ukraine, the alliance says, and this trend will continue in the coming months. At the same time, recruitment in Russia is proceeding at the same rate, about 30,000 people per month, the officials specified, as a result of which Russian troops are still managing to replenish human resources, but for a major breakthrough, they would need a new wave of mobilization. The Russian Armed Forces' yearly staffing plan for contract servicemen has been fulfilled by 78% by mid-October, Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev said, calling this rate rather good. We will continue our work on the staffing of the armed forces with contract servicemen. By mid-October of this year, the set yearly goal has been fulfilled by 78%. Overall, this rate is rather good, Medvedev said. He called to prevent delays and other staffing problems. Medvedev disclosed that he visited a recruitment station in the Yaroslavl region together with employees of the Russian Prosecutor's Office and the Federal Security Service. Compared to the previous year, the situation looks much better now. No systematic violations in the accounting of servicemen has been found, but individual problems are still there. We will talk about them, of course. We will definitely need to work to eliminate all problems, the official said. Earlier in July, Medvedev said that 190,000 people signed up for the contract service in the Russian Armed Forces in the first six months of 2024. NATO's Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine Center will soon be launched at a German military base in Weisbaden. The facility already hosts U.S. command making preparations for the deployment of long-range missiles aimed at countering Russia. Neza Visimaya Gazeta writes, citing new NATO Secretary General Mark Root. NATO decided to create the Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine Center at the bloc's July summit. Washington is expected to hand all of its related powers over to the facility before the U.S. presidential election. The New York Times explains that the Security Assistance and Training for Ukraine will continue operating even if Republican candidate Donald Trump, who said earlier that the U.S. needed to stop giving any aid to the Ukrainian army, is re-elected president. The new Secretary General of the North Atlantic Alliance believes that the temporary deployment of U.S. long-range missiles to Germany starting in 2026 will be an additional tool to counter Russia. U.S. President Joe Biden and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz agreed on the missile deployment on the sidelines of the NATO summit in July. Root expects that U.S. long-range missiles will remain in Europe until Germany, France and some other European countries develop similar weapons of their own. However, it's hard to imagine this happening anytime soon because because other NATO countries have relatively small defense budgets compared to the U.S. While supporting Kiev, NATO is working with the U.S. on its own aggressive plans, which are aimed against Russia. This is what Mark Root's statements are about. Moscow has repeatedly said that it will give a tit-for-tat response to such actions. Russian Lieutenant General Yuri Netkachev, a military expert, pointed out, the analyst noted that Moscow had strategic allies and partners ready to support its armed forces. This is particularly evident from Russian Defense Minister Andrei Belosov's recent visit to China. NATO is definitely raising tensions by holding nuclear drills near Russia's border. Alexei Zuravlayov, Deputy Chairman of the Russian State Duma Committee on Defense said, Notably, Finland, which maintained neutrality for over 50 years, is taking part in the exercise for the first time, he noted. This means that U.S. nuclear weapons will be brought to the country, which has never hosted them before. The thing to keep in mind is that these weapons are equipped with gliding modules and can be launched from NATO aircraft without crossing our border. That said, the threat of an attack from Finland will significantly increase, the lawmaker emphasized. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said Thursday that support from his embattled nation's Western allies is key to his victory plan to end the country's devastating war with Russia as he laid out details of the plan to European Union leaders. 
Zelensky was also shuttling across Brussels to meet with NATO defense ministers. The EU is a key supporter of Ukraine, a candidate member of the 27-nation bloc, as it fights Russia's invasion that began more than two and a half years ago. Zelensky outlined the five-point plan to Ukraine's parliament on Wednesday without disclosing confidential elements that have been presented in private to key allies, including the United States.